Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever and whenever you are. My name is Benjamin. My name is Caleb. And welcome to the next devlog in our game Monster Pack. This game is a challenge we're doing. We're trying to make the game in two months. We're now on, well this will be basically the end of week two. We're coming to the end of week two. And we wanted to give you guys a status update with how things are going. The first thing we wanted to talk about with our devlog today is kind of these pitfalls that we kind of fell into with the design of our game. And they have to do with failure spectrum. Failure spectrum is basically what does it take before you have lost. The example I always think of is Darkest Dungeon. In Darkest Dungeon, the enemies deal a lot of damage, but if you get hit by an attack that would have usually taken away all of your HP, there is a mechanic called Death's Door that prevents you from dying that turn and saves your character. So the failure spectrum is how many mistakes or how many bad things can happen to the player that they can still recover from. And we already know that when a monster dies, it's gone forever. And so we want to give the player resources to make sure that their monster can't die. But we also have, there's a fine balance there, right? Because we have to balance making sure that they don't have too many resources. You know, they can't just go to a healing center and heal their creatures over and over and over again. So that was one of the design problems that we've had to discuss. And some of the things that we've come up with are having elixirs. So one elixir heals your entire party. The other thing we came up with was instant switching. So inside of a battle, you can have your monster and let's say it gets low on health, you can instantly switch to another monster without it taking your turn. Then the monsters become a resource. So in, in a failure spectrum, you want to think about the resources that the player has and you want to push them to use their resources as far as they can. Get yeah. them to use as much of their resources as they possibly can before you give them an out, right? So in ours, we're saying switch monsters frequently and then when they all get really low on health, use an elixir. And your elixirs are going to be limited, but you'll have them. And that's kind of one of the things that we've come up with. We'll have to kind of see how that works, and we don't think we have it completely solved yet. But that's a good starting point. So at the start of the game, we can give the player maybe a few extra elixirs when you only have one monster. But then as you get a party of monsters, then you'll be smart about how you use your monsters combined with each other, and you can have less resources, less elixirs later in the game. So it's not just heal your monsters all the time. Mm -hmm. You won't be able to do that. You'll have to fight with them having low health and you'll have to take some risks in order to get the most benefit out of your elixir, right? Because the closer the monster gets to dying without actually dying, the better because the elixir is going to heal them all the way no matter what. Exactly. And their health is a resource. So you want the player to push that health to the brink as far as they can to having the monster die without actually letting it die. Do you actually feel that like giving them more elixirs at the beginning of the game is a good way to solve that problem? Because it feels kind of weird to want them to use elixirs a lot at the beginning, but then switch up and say later on, like, actually, now we're not giving you as many. You need to be careful with them. So if there was another way that we can make the initial balancing better without using elixirs, then maybe that would be a better approach. Yeah, you're right. And one of the things we talked about too was we talked about having your starting the starting monsters stronger than the ones in the wild, just having better base stats, right? Mm -hmm. Because the base stats really affect the battle significantly. Yeah. Um, stats are super important, way more important than level having a starting creature that has stronger base stats could help with that too, help prevent, maybe even the creature has similar attack and everything, but it just has a high health stat. So it's just kind of a tank. All the starting ones are tanks maybe. Um, say we make the monsters that the player first encounters in the wild have lower base stats. That's actually a better solution because you can have them motivated to catch that monster and then when that monster evolves, then its stats can be good. 
yeah. later on, maybe. And you could kind of solve that problem by making the mm. base version of the monster a little bit weaker, but then the evolved form stronger. And that also kind of goes along with your idea you were talking about at one point of having the player monster be strong at the beginning, but maybe towards the end of the game, the players will will start to feel the need to use their other monsters more. Yeah, and you can have the player monster, when it evolves, its stat change won't be as drastic as maybe a monster. You know, the starting monster, its stats won't... It's the, the upgrade in stats won't be as drastic as a monster you catch in the wild that upgrades into its second form. Those are some of the design things we talked over this week and some of the ideas we had. I think that's a good place to start. That's kind of the fun part of the job is mm -hmm. coming up with the design stuff. I started working on the sound. It turns out to be really fun to create sound effects. Uh, first I went and played the Pokemon games and I just noted down all the sound effects that I heard. That helped me kind of get an idea of the scope of all the sound effects. Then I went and downloaded BFXR. It's a small, lightweight application that allows you to basically generate a variety of 8-bit sounds. So like jumping sound effect, coin sound effects, and it generates them randomly with random parameters. I had a lot of fun messing around and figuring out how to get the sound that I was uh, wanting to get. But the fun was not correlated with the quality of the sound effects, I would say. <laughs> and so, so I suspect I'll have to go through and redo them. You did figure out the cool trick for if we ever come up with monster cries. Oh yeah. If you get one sound effect, you can press this button and it will mutate that sound effect over and over. And so in Pokemon, when you send out your Pokemon, it has a little cry. And when it dies, it also has a unique cry. Mm -hmm. It was really easy to actually generate a monster cry and then just mutate it a couple times, end up finding a sound that sounds like the original sound, but sounded like it was dying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I spent a lot of work programming, and obviously it's coming along. I actually streamed some today on my YouTube channel. If you want to check out the stream of me working on the game, there is a playlist in the channel. You have to go to the playlists because I made this stream unlisted, but it's in a public playlist, so you can go to the playlist and watch the stream. I ran into an issue when the player was walking into a battle, right, with a wild monster. There was a pause, and it was a pretty significant pause between when the battle should have started, like when it should have changed scenes to the battle scene, you know, changed from the world to the battle. I put it on my to-do list to look into it, so I start looking into it, and I could not figure out what it was. I was in my Discord talking with the other Godot users and doing debugging. I was using the profiler. I was doing all these things. This was yesterday. So when you can't figure out what it is through debugging in your code, then what you do is, I mean, luckily, or maybe not luckily, maybe just smartly by me, <laughs> our project is... I, I have our project on GitHub, right? Yeah. And with version, version control, you have a complete history of your project. So what I had to do was start a binary search. I don't know if any of you have ever played 20 questions, but 20 questions is a binary search. And so what I needed to do is go back halfway. Yeah. So I went back halfway through our project history and I said, was the issue still here? If it was still there, then I go back to the first 25% of the history. Yeah. Otherwise, cut it 75% of the history. Yeah. Right? And cut that tree in half. You get the general idea. And so I spent, you know, four or five hours. It shouldn't have taken me that long, but I'm not really great with Git. Like, I know the basics, but I'm not that great. So it took me longer than it would have taken someone who was good at this kind of thing. You need to get good. Yeah, I need to get good. <laughs> And so, but I was able to do it, you know, in a little while and find the point at which the bug was introduced. Yeah. Well, it turns out it was my theme. You can make a, a special font and I have a special font. There's two kinds of fonts. This one's a bitmap font. It basically uses an image. Mm -hmm. That's what makes it special. 
And for some reason, if I have a theme that has the default font set to this bitmap font that I made, whenever you change to that scene, there's a pause. The workaround is just, instead of having a default font for my theme, whenever I need a, a UI element to use my font, I just manually set the font on the UI element. That's what I spent most of yesterday doing. The good news is, at the end of the day, I actually got quite a bit of stuff done. Like the very end of the day, I was able to implement better, better transitions into the battle, little effects when you walk over grass. I wrote a shader that cut the player in half when you're in the grass to make it look like you're standing in the grass. Mm -hmm. Which and looks really good. Yeah, it looks pretty good and we can show some of those things. I implemented a basic dialogue system and then today I was able to continue to work. I implemented a really, really basic, needs a lot of polish, enemy trainer that you can battle with and they can have multiple monsters that you fight. And so I've been able to make a lot of progress. Okay, so the other thing I did was I started rearranging the tracks that I had already written in the previous week. When you rearrange something as a musician, all it is is taking the instruments and the notes and kind of shifting them around, making them sound more coherent. Uh, removing unnecessary things, adding in where things need to be added. You could think about it as like editing an essay. You're just kind of moving things around, moving the sentences and the phrases, making sure they're all in the right order. Unexpectedly, it's been surprisingly easy so far. As of today, I haven't rearranged the last track, which is the battle theme, but during the week, I've rearranged the main theme, the wild theme, and the town theme. They sound pretty good, so I'm pretty excited, and I'm pretty happy with how they went. Maybe we could put them at the end of this video, just like have the end of the video be the different themes. Yeah, maybe. They're, they're pretty long, but yeah. That's fine. It doesn't matter. They'll just be at the end. If people want to listen to them, they can. If they don't want to, they don't have to. Whatever the case, I'm excited to show you guys these tracks. In my opinion, they're some of the best soundtrack work I've done in chiptune. The soundtrack I think will be one of my better works because I'm more invested into this one than I've been into any other soundtrack I've done so far. Our plans after that are, we're gonna take a look at our calendar. calendar. Yeah. We're gonna take the time to sit down and reevaluate our calendar. calendar. I mean, you probably noticed before when we showed the calendar, calendar, but it was definitely more detailed initially and got less detailed as we got farther out because it's just harder to tell how things are gonna go. So that's kind of the plan. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this devlog. We, we are still trying to figure out a system for making these. The sound theoretically will be better in this one. Yeah. The editing theoretically will, will be, better be better in this, this <laughs> one. We were very surprised by the response on the other one. People really liked it. They gave us a lot of feedback. We, we love the feedback you gave us. Mm -hmm. It has gotten more views and more subscribers than any of my recent videos, so I guess you guys really like these devlogs. We appreciate that support. And these devlogs are kind of weird, like they're different than other devlogs, so I was kind of surprised when we just kind of, you know, recorded us having a conversation about our game, that people were attracted to that. And so i just like to say thank you to you guys for that. Hopefully we can keep improving the process and continue to make these videos more interesting. Yeah, and Caleb actually brought this up. I mean, it's pretty clear that the reason that the devlog did so well is because he was in it. <laughs> I mean, if you look at the correlation, right? None of my other videos had Caleb in them. I have make one video with Caleb in it, and it does super well, so... It's science, guys. It's science. That's <laughs> clearly the reason that it did super well. <laughs> But yeah, thank you so much for watching the devlog. Hope you enjoyed it. We will talk with you all next week.